In this lesson, we're going to carry on with our naming of molecules that have branches. Now, this one's super interesting because it's definitely an alkene. We can see that it's got a double bond, but it's also got branches. Now, what makes it interesting is that the branches, for example, you could call this number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So then the branches would take place on four and five, or we could label it from the right hand side and your branches would be on two and three. And so we would be tempted to start labeling from the right hand side. But when you have a double bond or any other kind of functional group, so anything that's not an alkane, you must label the molecule from the side that is closest to the functional group, not the branch. It's only with the single bond molecules that we were looking at in the previous video where it was just alkanes and haloalkanes. That's when you have to label it from the side closest to the branches. But for all the other molecules that have different functional groups, you label it closest to the functional group. I just want to quickly show you something with this molecule. So what we have here is we've just got all these single bonds. Okay, it's a six carbon chain, so that's hex, and it's definitely an alkane. But now to know where it could, because the functional group for a molecule like this is absolutely everywhere. Remember, it's all of these single bonds. And so how do we know where to label it? Well, that's why we look at branches, okay? But when you have molecules that have other kinds of functional groups, like O's or OH's or double bonds and things like that, then you can ignore the branches and you label it from the side that is closest to the functional group. We can't label this one from the side closest to the functional group because where is the functional group? Exactly, it's everywhere. So how can you label something from everywhere? So we have to go to a second type of ranking system and that's where you start where you, that's where you start with the branches. So you should always look at the functional group first and then the branches. I hope that makes sense. So back to this one. So we're going to start labeling it from carbon number one because that's where the functional group is over here. We're not going to worry about where the branches are. A functional group is much more important than a branch. It's just when you have an alkane, we can't look at the functional group because it's everywhere. So then we have to look at the branches instead. So we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon. So that's hex. Now this is an alkene. So we must specify where that is. So remember the homologous comes at the end and that's the alkene. So we're going to go like this. It's on carbon number one where we've got the double bond. See it is over there. Then we need to look, okay, so we've looked at the table, we've looked at the homologous, now we need to look at the attachments. So we've got attachments over here and over here. So that's carbon number four and carbon number five. We don't worry about the fact that the, carb, the, the attachment numbers are high because we want to name it from the side closest to the functional group. So on carbon number four, as well as carbon number five, each of those branches are called a methyl. Oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. I've added this to the table. So if you look at the number of carbons in the branch, if it's one, we call it methyl. And if it's two, we call it ethyl. We haven't looked at an ethyl one yet, but I'll do that just now. We'll never get branches with three or four. I mean, it can happen in real life, but they don't examine that in grade 12. And then because there's two of them, we're going to use the word dimethyl. So now things are starting to get quite technical. So there's this molecule over here. So let's have a look at this one. So this one's quite interesting. We need to find the longest continuous chain that also includes the functional group. So it wouldn't work if, I mean, we could try go with this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so that's five. Let's see if we can do better than that. We can't do this way because then you are completely eliminating your functional group. You're making your functional group become a branch and that doesn't work. So the longest chain that includes the functional group is going to be this one over here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's hept. Now we must name it. Oh, and then this part here is now going to be considered the attachment. So we've looked at the table. Now we need to look at the homologous, which is the type of molecule. Well, this is an alkene and you always name it on the side closest to the functional group. And so that's carbon number one and then carbon number two. 
So we're going to say two, and then it's an alkene like that. Now we look at our attachments. We've got an attachment on carbon number three. And how many carbons are there in that branch? Well, now there's two. And so this, for the first time, is where we would use ethyl. And so the name of that molecule is three line ethyl hept line two line ene. So with this molecule over here, we can see that our longest continuous chain is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then the attachments are going to be over there, over there, and over there. So now because this is an alkane, it means that there's no particular area where the functional group is. And so here we need to look at the branch numbers. If we label it from, num from the left hand side, this would be carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So your branches would be at two, three, and four. And if we had to label it from the right hand side, then this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so your branches would be at carbon four, five, and six. So if I write that over here, we clearly want to choose the first option where the numbers are two, three, and four. So we're going to label it from left to right. And so we have a seven carbon chain. And so from our table, we know that that's going to be hept. And we know that it's an alkane. So we're just going to end it with heptane. Then we've got branches on carbon two, three, and four. So we can say two, three, four. Now we've never had three of them like that before. So if this feels a little bit weird, it is something new. Then we know that each of those branches, if you look at each of them, they only have one carbon. So if we go to our branch table, we know that that will be methyl. And so we can write the word methyl over here. But now, because there's three of them, we're going to have to say tri. And so the, mo the molecule is going to be 2, 3, 4 with a line, and then trimethyl heptane. And so I trust that by now you guys are becoming very comfortable with the naming process when we have molecules that have branches. We'll keep practicing this in the next couple of videos. Thanks for watching.